Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be going over the Insider, which for me so far is the best gun that I've come across in Borderlands 3's second DLC Guns, Love, and Tentacles, and I'd be surprised if anything trumps it. As you saw in the intro, this gun can really tear it up, and I'll be explaining everything about it so you can understand why it is so good and how you can get the most out of it. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like. It helps to keep the uploads coming, and let's crack in. So the Insider doesn't really have a dedicated drop spot. There's thoughts that it may be from this guy, or it may be from that guy, but in reality that says it's a world drop, and no one has an increased chance to drop it. That's a little annoying, and means it's harder to get than some other items in the DLC. But you can get it off anyone, and I'd suggest farming bosses that actually drop legendaries, like Eleanor, but you can farm anyone, anyone you feel like. The Insider is a heavy hitting melee one shotgun with a decent fire rate and reload time. Like pretty much every melee one gun in the game, it comes with two elements that you can switch between, with the most adaptable pair being incendiary and radiation. However, unlike a typical melee one weapon, it doesn't have any charge time, which is nice and means there's less waiting and more shooting. This gun is vicious, both with the damage it deals and with how it feels to use. I mean, it feels like I'm barrel rolling in a jet plane when I shoot this thing. It has extremely high recoil and it's not steady either. Rather than having a smooth transition to the ceiling, it practically teleports your aim a couple of inches above where you shot. It takes getting used to, and if you're playing on Zane like I do, and you fire a lot faster than normal, the Insider is a whole nother beast when it comes to controlling recoil. You may find that you need to shoot less to cope with it, but no one wants to do that. I just shut my eyes and hope for the best. When you do land your shots, the Insider absolutely shreds. It deals mammoth damage, and the damage it deals is also considered splash damage, which is great for a Moe's build. Heck, it's great on everyone. Now you may think that because it deals splash damage that you should shoot at the ground beneath your target to ensure you hit them, but you'd be mistaken. The Insider's projectiles don't stop until they hit a world surface. They will fly right through your enemies, tearing up their insides, before moving on to the next one and doing the same to them. It's the same effect as the lob and some other guns in the game, but the projectiles fly a lot quicker and therefore can reach more enemies and deal more damage. It does consume two or three ammo per shot depending on the version, and I'm using a binary one here which should fire more projectiles and consume more ammo, but instead it's less on both counts. So looking at what variant you should be after, and here's the binary one again from before. Comparing that to this abundant one, and the abundant one fires the extra projectile, with 300 more damage per pallet, but consumes an extra bullet. For that extra bullet, you'd want it to deal 50% more damage to stay on par with the ammo consumed, but it doesn't, at least not for me. And that's a good comparison that you should look at anytime something like that arises. Speaking of ammo consumed, the Insider consumes a lot of it. I suppose that is to be expected when you obliterate everything in your path, but it's only a small chip on its shoulders. Overall, the Insider is an extremely powerful shotgun, one of the best weapons in the new DLC, if not the best. Outside of the DLC, it is still extremely viable and a great addition to the game in all respects. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about the gun in the process. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.